Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Alathrix, and of course, welcome to the Defenders of the Galaxy, the Prophets of Prophets, and ultimately, the all-round bestest people in the entire galaxy, the Divine Turtle Conglomerate, making sure that everyone li- Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Alathrix, and of course, welcome back to the Divine Turtle Conglomerate, the final defense against the Scourge. In today's video, of course, the main goal is to defeat the Scourge themselves, or at least pin them into a corner so they can no longer escape. But ultimately, we have a lot of other goals. What I really want to do is continue to push the resolutions so that we can make sure we have maximum trade value, even if it is at the cost of some of our happiness, since we are offsetting that with other things. But also, I want to make sure that our empire continues to grow, become more valuable, and ultimately collect more shiny things. So the fellows who we are after in this video, most likely, are going to be things like the Union, the Realm, the Confederacy, the Nation over here, the Regulators, if we have enough power as they attack the Scourge, but right now, to begin with, we have the Forerunners, the Fanatic Xenophiles, and we have the Holy Guardians. Both of these have truly fantastic homeworlds, which we really, really want to take over. Over here, we have a size 20 Gaia world, a size 12, and a size 10, all of which have unique buildings. And then for the Spiritualists, we have... Well, we can't see right now, but it's a size 22 and a size 30 Gaia world, both of which can be turned into city planets, becoming true powerhouses for our empire. We just need to get a little bit stronger, and then that's what we're going to be doing, attacking the fallen empire to make sure we have maximum things for the empire. The matter decompressor is reaching its final phase, giving us near unlimited minerals for use in pretty much everything. So what else do we have left? Well, the Mega Shipyard's about to finish as well. After that, what I would like is... We don't particularly need the Century Array. I almost never really go for that. We do want the Coordination Center giving us more shipyards. Sorry, more stations, more Navy capacity, and additional sublight speed. After that, it's going to be just Ring Worlds. Ring Worlds everywhere. Now, one thing I've been messing up, and I always forget this, it's one of these facts I remember, I remember for five minutes and I forget it again. Collection range from the trade hubs will go through gateways. What this means is that I don't really need to build the trade hubs on top of the gateway. Once this gateway here is maxed out, I will be able to collect everything from there, which means all of these trade hubs can be converted into something more useful, like anchorages or bastions to defend the trade, just anything more useful. So I will be slowly converting them back. The Scourge are now here in full force. Also, because we are psychic, we can talk to them. So if anyone would like to read these, feel free to. Hidden Worlds. Excellent. So this... Uh, since I haven't been reading what this was, is the Hidden Worlds archaeological site, which will eventually give us the Oracle, an incredibly powerful governor, which really fits the theme of our empire perfectly. Now, do I spend this influence on another habitat? I probably have to, don't I? Really, we need at least two habitats per one of these. That's the goal. The reason is, if the Scourge bombard one of these, they will eventually bring it below 50% health. Uh, they do 50% devastation, that is, which will turn off all the FTL inhibitors. If there's two of them, they have to do it to both. And if it's just one fleet, they'll have to swap targets, which the AI doesn't like doing, and then the original habitat will start healing, and so it will massively slow them down. If we can get enough habitats here, it pretty much blocks them completely, unless they have loads of fleets all dedicated to just sitting there, slowly bombarding planets and the Scourge only have the slowest bombardment stance, as if they're pacifists, which is great, because of course they want to eat everything on the planet. Destroying it is stupid for them. So they just focus on the fellows who will resist. I mean, that looks really cool. Whee! Upscaling complete. So there's at least one there, that's building the second. There's already three here if you include the planet, which of course you should. And one more is being built, correct? The yep, so will be four there. That's the main one we need to defend. Get at least two there, and then we're safe until they go all the way around. Then we're not again. 
A problem is it seems like they are going to go all the way around. Hopefully they'll start to diverge other directions. Here we go, we get the Oracle. Once again, feel free to read this if you'd like. Just pause the video. So with that, we get the ruler. Research actualized. The Oracle is a very powerful governor since he has the unique Oracle trait. Plus 10 stability, plus 20% unity, minus 45 crime at the cost of minus 10% research. Now that stability will outdo that research loss, or at least make up for it, I should say. Somewhat. Because the Oracle sees all. And doesn't that just fit our empire perfectly? We are already getting plus five stability from our psychics. I'm not sure where to put this fellow. So it's going to be in a system like this, where research is not being prioritized, then it's incredibly powerful because the extra stability isn't really causing any problems. Or at least it comes at no cost. So I'll have to figure out where we're going to put down almost no research, and then that's where the Oracle will rule. Our fleets are now strong enough to utterly destroy one of the fallen empires, so we're moving out. Our ground forces are already ready, made up of primarily psychers and xenomorphs. I'm assuming the psychers are the ones controlling the xenomorphs to do our bidding. Please don't be going this way, I'm only just now building a habitat there. Please, 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 and... No, you're going down here. Okay, thank the warp. Or the Shroud, I suppose, in this game. Oh. Yes, you're going away as well! <laughs> okay! Wow! Okay, so thankfully the Scourge do like to sort of expand almost like a bubble. They don't like going too far ahead in one particular path, so... Yeah, they're going to go down here now a fair bit. Uh, there's an L gate there, but that's not active. Again, we got very lucky with wormhole placement and such. There's just no for them to jump around. It's going to be a very long time before they reach somewhere where we can't really predict their movements. Once they get over here, that's going to be a bigger problem. Actually, no, that just goes to there. They spawned in the perfect place. Wow. Just keep on building habitats, lads. Just keep on going. I believe in all of you. Especially Joe over here. Yeah, Shroud? You want to be nice to us this time, please? I don't care about any of the... You know what? I'll try that one anyway. A newborn avatar, uh, it's <laughs> avatar rather, has coalesced into a colossal warrior. I'm gonna call you Avatar. When you're not that powerful, um. Oh no, no chance. Unity is worthless to us, influences everything. Sorry, lads. The greater good of the galaxy is now our main priority. Still, we have a colossal warrior, which is incredibly powerful. Look at that. Morale damage is 22 to 45. And remember, when it comes to fighting on ground, when you're fighting on planets, having a few very powerful soldiers is better than loads of weaker ones, since only a set amount of them can fight at a time. So having that wall of just pure damage is generally better. Okay, all well, our fleet's almost in position. It's almost time to take out the spiritualists. Which is a shame, because they like us, but I can't even invite them into our federation anyway. I also can't talk today. Every word I say sounds weird. I know. Totally different than usual. Focusing almost all of our society tech on army health. If we can just keep on increasing this over and over again, that's the main thing we want right now. Although army damage is also very good at fighting off the enemy, this just means they have to bombard for much longer before they can ever land. And once again, they can only bombard in the weakest stance, so it takes a very long time for them to do major damage. Where are you going? Where are you going? Please go away. Thank you. Been very lucky so far. I do feel like we are going to lose a chunk. The main thing I think I'm going to lose is this system over here. Maybe we should start putting down some strongholds. Yeah, I mean, these worlds are fantastic. That's the only reason why I haven't been turning them into uh, defense worlds. They're just fantastic worlds. I mean, look at this Zen world. Upkeep from jobs minus 15%. That's insane. Okay, right, let's just send over some extra. Fellows, yep, they're all going to be upset because these are specialists, but that's fine. 
They'll be converting soon enough. Let's just get all these planets with at least two or three strongholds each. Well, actually fortresses, the upgraded strongholds, since only the upgraded strongholds have the FTL inhibitor. And same with the habitat. As annoying as it is, I don't want to lose these worlds too quickly. So hopefully they'll arrive here, they won't be able to instantly capture things, and it'll just go away, like they've done in multiple other places. Meanwhile... Commencing new business venture. We are definitely strong enough to do this. Competitive station engaged. We're still sticking with cruiser spam just for the silly fun of it, but still a bit nervous about that. But glorious Game missiles. Is where you find it. That looked bizarre as it took out multiple Competitive of those stations. Uh, who are you, Trade Commission? Oh. Uh, no, we don't even like you. You currently like us just because you're being hurt by someone else. But no, you shunned us before and we shall shun you now. There's nothing to gain from this venture. For us, anyway. What we could do is increase our explosive damage, but I don't have enough of the rare resource for that. And it is very, very expensive. Is that enough? Yay, there we go. Plus 25% to our explosive damage. Competitors engaged. Have you considered missiles? An admiral just died. That was mean. Where are, where are our strike craft even going? Evading competitive fleet. The only real problem is we are set up to fight the scourge, and the enemy here is like the opposite of the scourge of really high shields and such. So we're not particularly good versus them, but still, we crushed them nonetheless. And our fleets are incredibly powerful, so they can easily start taking these worlds. I think the main problem I'm seeing with missiles is just the range of them. They don't fire as early as I'd expect for a range 80 weapon. Saying that, what is the range of a large weapon which we normally use? I know that this is 150. 130. Yeah, I think missile spam, despite the fact it's a fun idea, is going to be a problem. It really means we're going to have to be far stronger than we currently are. But there is something really satisfying about seeing the missiles change target after the initial target has been destroyed. It's visually a very appealing weapon. Okay, Sky Temple has strength of 3.3k. Make sure to take out those ground forces before they land and defend the throne. We will happily destroy these. So, what populations do you have? Is it just these fellows? 77 Acolytes of the Workshop. You know, I've never really read these before. Sky Cardinals. Acolytes of the Plow. Acolytes of the Hammer. Sky Temple is very similar. So, once we take over this, we're going to turn everything into city districts. That way we can turn these into city worlds, and that way we can actually give everyone jobs. At the moment, there's not actually that many normal jobs available, so there's going to be a real problem with unemployment. More of our worlds convert into truly beautiful things. Good business is where you find it. Okay, that's where their fleets of gathered. So let's go and take out that. And that'll be pretty much it. We have essentially won this. It's now just waiting around until we're strong enough to deal with all the worlds. So with missile spam, would it be more efficient just to have corvettes? So each corvette... There we are, so correctly. So each corvette is one missile, one small weapon. Each cruiser is three missiles and four small weapons, one medium. This is four, right? It takes up four in the fleet versus one. So you get one extra missile if you went with just corvettes, since you'd have four missiles for the price of three. 
but you'd have way less of the energy weapons, which are also really good, but only at shorter range. These, of course, also have insane evasion stats. Which we could up a little bit. In fact, no, we will up soon, because we're about to get the tech from the Fallen Empire, which is better thrusters. So, basically, the 90% evasion, which is a pretty big deal. What are the Scourge like when it comes to tracking? Really good. Yeah, 70% tracking, 80% tracking. Compare that to our weapons, 40%. Evasion isn't going to be a big deal. Yeah, tell me in the comments below, what is best? If anyone actually knows mathematically, is it best to spam corvettes or spam cruisers if you want to do missile spam? Since they're the only two options which can actually, you know, use missiles. So to sum up, I know that missiles are shorter range than the standard large weapons. I just thought 80 would be a bit more, well, substantial. And it really isn't. The torpedoes have pretty terrible tracking as well, don't they? Yeah, what we need to do is win a single fight versus the Scourge. Not even a good fight versus the Scourge, just a little bit of a win. Just at least one Scourge dead. That way, what we can do is research their corpses, and their corpses will give us the Scourge missiles, and the Scourge missiles are amazing versus the Scourge. Their tracking is awful, but they do 31 damage per second. They are range 120, so yeah, instantly, that's what we need. And they do bonus damage to both armor and hull. Just to compare that to our missiles. They're doing almost double the damage. And they have a bonus to hull. And they're longer range. That's what we want. We want Scourge missiles. We need Scourge missiles as soon as possible. That's what will make this viable. In which case, I am going to spam Corvettes. Because I want hundreds of them all firing those missiles. Because that would look amazing. So a couple of thoughts. If I am going to go with Corvette Spam, what I'm going to need is at least one picket ship. This should help out versus the enemy missiles and the enemy strike craft. The strike craft particularly will be very, very dangerous versus us. Let's go with this. Go with picket, sure. And then of course our dragon scale armor. Just mix these in with the fleets. So that way the enemy... Strike craft won't just completely obliterate the corvette swarms. Gonna give them afterburners, because that's more fun. I just started making some corvettes. Let's stop that for a second. Because... Actually, no, no. Keep Just keep that going. I'll swap them out later. But essentially, our missile boats, which are our standard corvettes, I also want to use the afterburners then. And I'm going to be using Picket rather than Swarm. I don't know if this is really correct. The reason is, with the Afterburners, we're still reaching 84.5% evasion. Maximum is 90. We're about to upgrade the Impulse Thrusters, so that extra evasion is doing nothing. The tracking, on the other hand, is going to be useful since the enemy are quite high evasion themselves. Okay. Here's something curious. What's better, the Amoeba here or our standard Strike Craft? So the Amoeba have a speed of 500, which is decent. Versus 700 here. So the speed is actually more important than I originally thought, because it means that they can get into combat with the Scourge faster before the enemy are in range of us. I was attempted to make these carriers just to start combat a bit earlier as well, giving them more time once again to get to the enemy. But these do 40 damage, and so do the Amoeba. I'll take a better look in a second. Oh, and they have good tracking as well. Yeah, I'll take a proper look at this once we actually have this research, so I can just look at them side by side a lot easier. So I'm taking a look here. By the looks of things, the advanced strike craft is better than the amoeba, but the amoeba might be better than the improved strike craft. Does more damage. Is only a little bit slower. 650 versus 500. The more damage obviously is nice, it has the same benefits, uh, shield penetration and armor damage are the exact same. This one though has more tracking and more evasion, and some shields, hmm. Hull points 40, shield 20, hull points 50. This however costs 30 energy, this costs 45, so I think flagella are somewhere here between basic strike craft and improved strike craft, maybe an argument to beat either. But yeah, not beating the rank 3, at least 
from what I'm seeing, unless I'm missing something, which is, of course, potentially true. Same range and everything. What I like is all of this tech, which is affecting our defense armies, is also affecting our more aggressive armies. I wonder which one of these is the Avatar, and I wonder if it's actually in the fight right now. Psionic army, psionic army, psionic army, psionic army. Xenomorphs and owned populations just in there for fun. Still, we break their minds nice and quickly because of our psionic prowess. Lovely, got the Dark Matter Reactor. We do not care at all about the deflectors since we're just not using shields. And let's just increase our army for a little bit longer. Our food is finally actually okay. The reason is these ring worlds are now food worlds. Yep, we're using ring worlds. All this brilliant tech for farming. I feel like this is the turtles disrespecting their old faith. The old version of their faith. The faith which said that they are not divines, but the forerunners are. Now feeling that they themselves... Oh dear. Are the divines? We don't need that ring world. Guardians of the Galaxy. We don't need them. Oh, the Peacekeepers. Okay, well. Have fun. If you send an envoy to us, we can invite you into our federation. We are the most powerful. Send an envoy to us. We can't send one to you. Do it. Be friends. As a random aside, something I've only just now realised looking at just how powerful some of our ground forces are is that the bulk of our armies are made up of these fellows. Not these particularly, but all of our lithoids because we keep on sending the li- Wait, you're half turt, lad? How did a rock breed with a turtle? Either way, you are the result. Aren't you adorable? But the point is, lithoids have plus 50% army health, and I keep on placing them on habitats, which means most of the population here, if I actually click on the habitat, is lithoid. So the armies are going to be incredibly powerful with all their extra health. So even this habitat here with only two fortresses is already at 1.4k. Some of our habitats, some of our worlds, are now in the 5,000 plus range already, and they're just going to increase more and more and more. We are becoming experts at hand-to-hand -hand combat, or perhaps just throwing rocks. Lay down your arms and surrender, lest your mind be irreparably damaged. Research actualized. Uh, actually, still want to go with health more than anything else. More health means it takes longer to bombard the habitats. The damage is nice and would definitely be more beneficial at this point, but we're all about defending versus the Scourge. I really wish the automatic designation was a little bit better here. This is clearly a fortress world. It has fortresses. How is this a factory station? I would have accepted trade or fortress in terms of what you might expect it to be based on what I've built, but not anything else. So the fortress designation gives the defense armies plus 20% damage and it reduces orbital bombardment damage, which is good because I'm yet to start building the planetary shields. I will be building them very soon. Right now, though, we just need a mass of soldiers. And this is the shield I am talking about, the Planetary Shield Generator, reducing orbital bombardment damage by 50%. Yep, this world is now almost at six sorry, almost at 7,000 Defense Force. The Fallen Empire now is all but finished with. The Celestial Throne is going to take a lot of work to make into a city world, but it's definitely worth it. We're going to, of course, be keeping the Specialist Buildings because they're amazing. We will, however, be removing the Sky Domes because I want the people here to work to earn their keep in the best empire in the galaxy. Look at that, despite devastation, crime, unemployment, we're still at 61% stability. We're very good at making things stable. It seems like they were already pretty much purely spiritualist, so that's great as well. Gonna be building a gateway here, and that'll act as our trade station. Because there's going to be loads of trade from all these worlds once it's all up and running, especially that. A 30 size world of only city districts? Yeah. 
Incoming inquiry. Lot of trade, a lot of energy, a lot of consumer goods, lots of everything we could possibly want. Seems like the main enemy forces are down here and currently dealing with the worlds over here, which has gave, gave us enough time to build up these worlds. So we are now okay over here, I think. No, we're not. Okay, need to just move a few people over here as soon as this habitat's done. This one system is the last system to reinforce along this border. The Fallen Empire has fell. What a shame. And you'll be the capital of this district. Can I do that? Yes, there we go. What should I use these worlds for? Could use them for farms or just tech. I mean, just more tech is always very, very welcome. Yeah, let's go with that. Send in our Psy Warriors to make sure they're thinking the correct things, and then allow them to research. Now, don't worry about the amenities and everything else. That will fix itself once the planetary devastation is reduced. Is where you find it. We are getting so lucky. Is it because of the FDL inhibitors? Does that actively stop them from entering the system? Because I swear it seems like it does. Maybe they're trying to get somewhere else, but that blocks them, so they just think, eh, not worth it. I really don't know. But it seems to be working. So it's hard to complain. Sending in a Corvette Swarm over here. What we're going to try and do is take out one of the unguarded Scourge stations. This is a pretty big deal, because if we can do this, I believe that will drop some debris. That debris can then be analysed, and then we can fit all of our vehicles with Scourge missiles. Where are their main forces? I keep seeing the Swarmlings, but I haven't seen the, um, the bulk around. Oh! No, that's Swarmlings, but where are they? I am a little bit concerned. Saying that, this is all being destroyed and I can't see it, so I can only assume they're all here. They're not spreading out as fast as the last time I saw the Scourge, though, which... Well, it's good for us, but kind of boring to watch. Oh, there they are. Good, good. Defending where I want to go. So it turns out that is actually pretty well defended. Okay, stay put. Research actualized. We could save the worlds of some of the other empires. Or we could just have a fight over here. As long as we kill one or two of them, they will drop the debris still, just to end up losing our corvettes in the process. Just need one undefended system, and I think that might be it there, but... Okay, for once, the Sentry Array would be really good, just right now for this one circumstance, so I'm trying to take out one station. Okay, change of plan, move down here. Thankfully it's nice and easy to do that, because you have gateways everywhere. The enemy bases are really bad versus the Corvettes. They have the missiles, which are countered, they have the strikers, which are countered, and then they have the medium acid blasts, which have very poor tracking and honestly not that good accuracy either. We lost 31 Corvettes, but considering the station was stronger than our fleet, that was pretty good. And that means there are debris. Darn it, they don't drop debris. Debris, rather, that is very annoying. What about the construction vessel? Does that drop it? It should do, right? All of that. Hello, we have missiles. Really? Only the soldiers will... I mean, it makes sense, only the soldiers have the missiles, but still, I thought the station would. A fleet has reached over here. Thankfully, we are already very prepared with multiple worlds all fortressed up. Evading competitive fleet. Just glad it took them this long to eventually move around to here. 
Well, goodbye to our station. No! Darn it. Well, here's our fleet basically just going to their death. But as long as we take out at least one swarmling from this group, it means we can then dissect the body. Why are we in breach of galactic law? Oh, because too many of our ships have went away. Well, I'm rebuilding them anyway, so no big deal. Yep, a definite loss. It was a 3 mil fleet versus like 500k. But we're doing pretty well. Done a lot of damage to them. And we are stopping a lot of their damage because they're so focused around missiles and swarms and such. But of course, their acid blasts will eventually Colonial take us out. Upsizing. Wow, I've actually managed to half them. Considering we don't even have the Federation damage bonus yet to the, to the um, endgame fleet. Gonna be loads of debris there now, though. That was for the greater good. Eventually. They appear, they take out our station, and they go away. It seems like they're mostly waiting for their ground forces, which are currently... Yeah, they're down here. I saw at least two more as well. They're all down here. Currently, some of them are even actually engaging on some of the worlds. But they are now bombarding some of our planets, which is not the best. But mostly, they appear, take out the station, then go away. Competitors detected. For now. One of our worlds is, in fact, being bombarded very, very slowly. They will end up killing some of the populations, though it is only light damage. It will still kill some of them, but there's no chance they're going to be able to invade here anytime soon. There's just no ground forces nearby, so, yep, just go ahead. Making sure our foundry worlds are getting some upgrades as well, because we are now almost at 3,000 alloys per month. And I want that to increase. Turns out Corvette Spam is very expensive. On the upside, we can now do this. Uh, what do we want most? Do we want this? Extreme trade value, or should we go for this first? Further increasing how many bits of alloys we get. More alloys, more minerals. Less habitability, which we don't care about. And here's the big thing. Worker population resource output. That's every single job one of our own populations will do, so that is definitely what we should go with first. Still fits the Empire perfectly. And is the most powerful for us. Why does it fit the Empire perfectly? Well, simply because it's all about getting every last bit of resource from every last planet. Nothing is going to waste. Everything is ours. It's pure greed. You thought you were a swarm. Meet Corvettes. Annoyingly, the missiles don't seem to render when we're fighting in such high numbers, which is really so Oh no, they do, they do. It's just very hard to see them. Can't even see the enemy. Oh my god, we're... Just ripping them apart. We lost way more Corvettes than I thought. Never mind, I was getting all cocky then thinking, ah, look how powerful that stuff is. Nope, we still lost <laughs> like a hundred plus Corvettes. But still, this area is now safe for our scientists. Get there and grab me those missiles. You guys can return home, which I thought was over here. Oh, that's right, you were made at the shipyard. You don't actually have a home base. There we go. Also, I just realised I haven't had a single look at the maximum size habitat for us. So this is the maximum size habitat for the reptiles. This is the habitat world. It is pretty big. Still, though, the damage was pretty extreme from our forces, so... Now that we're going to have Scourge missiles, that's going to drastically increase. And our tech is increasing still. And we're almost at a monthly gain of 4k 
alloys. So, yeah, we are getting there. We are becoming very powerful very, very fast, and we are still holding them at bay, although over here is just becoming an utter problem. Well, that's that. So, I'm guessing that'll be under engineering? Oh, no, we're under society, won't it? Okay. Finish off that. Under society, we have the Scourge missile. So, so much better than the ones we're using currently. Well, in some ways it is. It does have worse tracking. That seems to be the main hang-up here. If we compare it to one of our normal Corvettes. Yeah, tracking 10% versus tracking 5%, but at the same time, it's longer range. It does more damage. It has a higher bonus versus the enemy we're currently fighting. In almost every way, this is the superior weapon. Tracking seems to be the one negative. Wow, look at that. So this is our base damage before all the other modifiers. 22.85... 37.34. That is a drastic increase. Well, it's official. I'm now powerful enough to defeat the entire galaxy with the resolutions. Shame. Everything will be ours, and everyone will be better for it. You'll thank me when you're older. What I'm really hoping for is the psychic version of this, the computers, because currently I don't have the sapient version since I can't unlock that, since I'm not allowing AI, because that's just how our empire works. I wonder if... No, we need to keep... Actually, yeah, if we do increase artificial intelligence, even just to servitude, will that allow us to unlock that tech? It's a really powerful bonus for our vehicles. I think I'll just hold out and just hope we get the Psycho version. Once again, the Scourge arrive, they take out our Starbase, and then they begin bombarding a planet, which already has 100% devastation. But again, good luck getting through. It's ground forces. Our forces are now getting fairly strong, so we should be able to start taking out their smaller fleets quite easily. I'm thinking about pushing down here soon just to clear the way. Also, what we need to do is convert our Colossus. Currently, the Colossus is still in the Divine ability, but instead, we're going to swap it over so it's able to destroy the Scourge planets in a single hit. Done. The Divine Enforcer is now... Wait, would the Global Pacifier work? I'm almost certain it wouldn't, but I want to see if that will work, because that would be hilarious. We need to find out. If the global pacifier works, it means we can go to one of the Scourge worlds and just put it in a bubble. And then that's it. It's a bubble. <laughs> Deal with it. It seems like quite often the Scourge gives up after hitting 100% devastation. It makes sense, because I guess the AI is trying to not roadblock itself, and that's kind of what's happening. It keeps on sending the Scourge over here, they bombard one of the planets, they realise we just don't currently have the ground forces to deal with this, and it's going to take forever, and then they move out and start taking more space, hence why they've kind of just gone south. And they are devouring everything else, mind you. Just not us. We're just not delicious enough. So I've went ahead and I have started building a lot more in the way of both alloys, as I mentioned earlier, but now really focusing on science again. I want to hit 30k science before the next 10 years are up. With enough research, we'll lose less of our vehicles. And through that, we keep more of our profits. For the profits. Yet yeah, these fleets are getting pretty scary now they can use these Scourge missiles. Scourge missiles and Dragon Scale armor, these are pretty much the perfect vehicles right now, except we still need the better AI. We still only have the advanced combat computers since we can't get the AI version. And I've been very unlucky with the Shroud. So far though, our worlds are holding off the Scourge, so we can just relax until we have a critical mass of Corvettes, and then we're going to swing in and destroy everything. One other issue we currently have is we are running out of minerals rather quickly. Our empire seeks constant expansion, constant generation. 
and it's becoming more difficult. Even with the matter decompressor currently maxed out, we still hunger for more. Here's looking at the peacekeepers. And by the looks of things, they're about to send their fleets against the Scourge, in which they will lose, trying to defend the galaxy. And then, we could always just devour them. Or we could finally get to work against the Commonwealth. We share one border with them. And currently, their allies are pretty much dead. And your allies are dead, though. You could join us. But I would rather simply devour you. Yeah, your allies really can't help you right now. It'd be very mean to go after you, but you know what? I think that's what we're doing. Okay, Corvettes, we're bored. Let's get to work. I think this wormhole, wormhole over here as well will go to their territory, so one of you please go here. Understand, Commonwealth. It's not that we have anything personal against you. In fact, we think you've done a fantastic job holding off the Scourge. But on your own, you're going to be destroyed. You won't allow me to simply control you. And honestly, we just need more resources for this war. Afterwards, of course, we'll be happy to give you it all back. You can trust us. Why would we ever lie to you? We have only our customers' best interests at heart. We have only our customers' best interests at heart. Now, I'm fairly certain that wormhole is the one I'm about to discover. Oh, and the game lags out. Yep, there it is. No idea where that one goes, though. So it's probably best if we do take over this territory, even just for those. So I can split up our fleets. They are more than capable of destroying absolutely everything. Competitors detected. And now they are armed with Scourge missiles, which must be terrifying to see. Competitors engaged. Hearing the constant news of the Scourge and how powerful they are, destroying a whole section of the galaxy, and then the enemy you face are using their weapons. Sometimes they just don't spawn in, though, which is really sad. Unless those were the missiles, I think they were the plasma weapons. Either way, we will be able to destroy them fairly easily, is the point. Yeah, we definitely used them, it just didn't show them. Too many shots, the game doesn't render them in to avoid, you know, the game kind of crashing in on itself, which is fair enough. Okay, this fleet will take this territory over here. And the rest will go around and start taking the worlds. Since we're going with very silly builds right now, one other thing I would love to see is just this. Destroyers with the large weapon. Now, I'm not necessarily saying these are a bad design type. Just every time I've used them, I've never really been able to get much effectiveness out of them. But I want to see what happens if we mix some of these in with our Corvette fleets. So, artillery mode. Full dragon scale. And we could, of course, make these the picket version as well. But I think I'm just going to stick with these for now. And hopefully the Corvettes will deal with all the missiles and everything. I do love the concept of this. Just as soon as the ship is just about large enough to have a large weapon, there it goes. There's the weapon with the other weapon kind of hitting it in the back. But let's ignore that. Guess it can fire sideways. I mean, that's kind of the point there. But still, I'm going to start mixing those into future fleets. And thankfully, we have been increasing our energy weapon damage a lot, so they will still be very powerful. And they still counter the Scourge, just like the missiles. Ah, there's the missiles. Okay, so it's just really difficult to see them. They're not quite as obvious. And wow, they're slow. How slow is a Scourge missile? Does it have a speed stat? Speed of 18. What's the speed of a normal missile? Speed of 50. Wait. Oh, they're the same speed, it's just aircraft are so fast they outpace their own missiles. Okay. So there they are. They look very similar to the plasma weapons. <laughs> oh, it's already dead! Stop! The cruisers are also being upgraded. Since I kind of forgot. They'll also now be using the Scourge missiles. I'm not really using many of these, but still. In fact, I'm gonna give them the afterburners. Probably not as good, uh, but I do want them to be able to keep up with the fleets they're with. Considering I'm not using battleships right now, 
We may as well go with the speed option, since I normally don't get to have such fast fleets. It is really nice using Corvettes. Yeah, watching again, the missiles are actually fired at a decent range, as you would expect, considering they have a range of 120. It's just a matter of them being quite slow and not visually fairly obvious, especially in the swarm like this. Still, each of these is stronger than the old missiles, so we'll keep them. And once again, this poor thing has been battered after it's already died to other weapons. Yeah, those are going to just destroy Scourge. Thank you for being our test subjects, Commonwealth. How are you still friendly with us? Oh, because of the greater threat, that's why. <laughs> They're still trying to be friendly like, haha, oh, you, you silly people, haha, <laughs> fun prank, go and kill the Scourge, please. No. I can pacify the world. I like that a lot more, and it fits the theme of the Empire so well. Turn them into trophies, into baubles for us to research, thus giving us more for the future, and perhaps one day we'll figure out a way to cleanse the Scourge from the world without completely destroying it. Because at the moment, if you invade it, sorry, if you bombard it, it becomes a barren world, which costs a lot to reform. Still something we can take back, but I like this a lot more. This has been even more profitable than I originally thought it would. Dark matter there, dark matter there, and five of it over here. Why is dark matter important? Because that's currently the main thing holding us back, completely spamming our fleet. Not for long, though. It doesn't cost all that much dark matter per ship. As you can see here, this one only costs... Uh, four? Three? Three, yes. I can do reading. Uh, these can cost two each, so it's not all that much per one, but when we're building hundreds of these things, it does add up pretty quickly. This is going to help out a lot. Attempting to acquire planetary also, my ground forces now are just insane. 13,000 is their power, made up of psionic armies, the psionic avatar of the shroud itself, xenomorphs, and owned populations here to earn their freedom. I mean, to pay off their debt. And they will! Eventually. Planetary market secured. We break their bodies, we break their minds. Ooh, we find even more dark matter. You are holding out on us. Well, a resolution has passed, which means now we're only one off finishing off industrial development. We are one off galactic commerce, and we are one off divinity of life. Though I think someone's trying to repeal that? No, why is it like that then? What have I done wrong? Oh no, we haven't yet got Silence the Soulless. So we are one further back with Divinity of Life, but the others are still going forward, and I think that makes sense for this Empire. Though spiritual, these two are definitely more us. We just need more influence. I've already spent influence and lots of our resources, so the Celestial Throne work will turn into the Arcology Project soon, which will be amazing. That'll be just over 10 years, it'll be after these three finish, and then this will take 10 years. And I'm saving up to upgrade the Sky Temple as well, showing the Fallen Empires that we just do things better. They had a size 26 Relic World? Well, and you're using it for mining? Why are you using a relic world for mining? And you're not even doing a good job with it. Okay, for now we do actually need the minerals, so you know what? Let's go ahead and use this for mining and rare resources. And why have you got the exotic gas refinery when you could just put down the gas extraction wells? Same amount of resource, less stuff consumed. Sure, let's turn this world into, well, a refinery world. Seems a bit weird to do, but it's already set up to do so, and yeah, may as well. Okay, you guys need to go down here now. And the fleet. You know what, just jump there. I want to see what's in this system. Why is it not being, ooh. Ooh, it had the Stellar Devourer. Mm -hmm. 
And... Research actualized. Why haven't you climbed the system yet, dum-dums? Ooh, hello enemy fleets. Well, you're gonna be crushed, aren't you? Gonna hurt us a lot too. This is the problem with Corvettes, they just have so little health. Even if they are going to utterly dominate, which they really are. They can be really hurt themselves. Yeah, we lost 26 there, but to be fair, we did destroy all of their fleets. And that was one of our fleets. Yay, repeatables. Well, we have completed our task. All of our regular fleets are no longer needed here. We are going to need a gateway over here so we can get all our lovely trade value. And for a while, things are going to be a bit problematic since we are converting such a large amount of population. But that's that. Can all ships please head on over here? Except for the hatchling. You get to stay there. And just chill. You're too adorable to fight, aren't you? Yes, you are. Colonial Enterprise of Pretty much every single system where there can be enemies, there are now enemies. The fortresses are holding well. And for the most part, there is enough garrison. Only a few exceptions like this one over here. So I am now going to be sending any spare populations we have. Looking for any worlds which are almost complete. There we are. Now keep on sending until it says disable a build slot, which you won't allow. Just need as many soldiers as possible in every single one of these. We are now putting forth profit maximization engines. This will be in the Senate in 202 days, which we are going to utterly dominate. And this has a number of effects. This is going to be a pretty insane change for everyone, especially us. Well, it's going to be more beneficial for us anyway. On the downside, our navy capacity... Actually, no, that's already under effect. Never mind. So what's actually changing is an extra 5% trade value, an extra 20% diplomatic weight from economy, an extra 10% resources from all jobs, minus 15% happiness, sorry, 25% happiness throughout the board, and plus 50% happiness to rulers. Overall, that should give us more resource throughout the Empire. Now landing on the home system. Commencing seizure of planetary asset. Yeah, you're pretty much research done for. Actually. And we are already now at 33,000 research at the cost of almost all of our other resources, but our tech is getting along very quickly now. Now, believe it or not, but the game is telling me that this world is rather upset. Why could that possibly be? <laughs> oh, wow, that's a lot of lights. Something I don't think I've ever really checked out. Are more lights added the larger population? Uh, probably not. I mean, that's only at 47 and... Well, that's a lot of lights. Can't see many more being added. Okay, we do need to start clearing out the Scourge from our territories. We're about to start losing single habitats at the moment. I know, whole habitats. How are we going to manage? But uh, seriously, that can cause a bit of a problem. I am seeing some ground forces now. They're not all that powerful. It seems like most of them have been hurt elsewhere. But there are the odd groups of like 3 to 4k going around. Not yet able to really land anywhere, but soon. Soon they will be. How did I not notice the giant floating habitat of Doom? That's where I would live. In the glowing habitat. <laughs> Just looking down on the entire galaxy. <laughs> I've just noticed. <laughs> so I've just noticed this sector's name. <laughs> it's like someone's trying to insult me. And autocorrect has messed things up. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I've been laughing for the last five minutes at that. <laughs> Maybe I am a bit too tired. <laughs> Why do I still have the odd civilian industry just randomly placed? We are getting so many consumer goods from every other source. We do not need this. Oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Oh dear, the Commonwealth is no longer part of this galaxy. Well, it is. It's now a part of me. 
And so with that, I believe I can stay at Squirm. We'll still keep this because, yeah, we still have the planet, so we'll just kick them out. You two can stay there and fight the Scourge. You know? You know. Mind giving me my colony back? Thank you. So many habitats they've left behind. Everyone is so kind in this galaxy. So now we're transforming the entire Empire's population into psychers. It's going to be a bumpy ride for the next 10 or 15 years. It's okay, we can still float on alloys and consumer goods. Okay, where are you going? Can everyone please get to the border? That'd be great. Oh my god, the swarms. Colonial Enterprise upsizing. Some battleships and all those little balls of energy are coming from our destroyers, which we now have quite a few of. As soon as the missiles reach it, which there they are, there goes all the armor straight away. Oh god, that is a swarm, but it looks like they're all being distracted. Is the station gone yet? Yeah, the station's gone. Their strike craft and everything should be pretty much devastated quite easily, since we have loads of point defense. Oh, Corvettes get crushed so easily. Might start focusing on upgrading armor rather than upgrading weapons over and over and over again, but it takes so long for them to survive more than one hit. You have to do so many repeatables for that. Still. There goes their fleet. Continue to there. And onwards. We can always swap over to battleships if we need to. Or just cruiser spam if we really do need the extra range. Okay, you're going away. Fantastic. How much damage did you do? Uh, you did destroy one of the fortresses. That's the main way you're going to end up destroying a lot of our armies. But you can't take us below 21 population. So I'm still going to have at least four of the buildings. Which is still enough army to repel one of your 3k army fleets. Which is good. In case I end up going with battleships, we now have two versions. One with point defense and one with just pure aggression. Another fight with the little old corvettes. So although we are losing a lot of people and a lot of ships, I like to think the idea here is simply... Although the captains are truly loyal to the faith, are here as the conduits of profit... Most of the crew, on the other hand, are the indentured workforce. Those who have strayed from the path of profit. Those who don't truly believe in our values. They are here to redeem themselves. Those which will survive will be elevated in society. Those who pass are simply reaching salvation in their own unique way. Again, not a nice thing, but something I truly believe this empire would do. Are you can head towards me as well? No, you're not. Okay. Really do want to take out this station, but that's a strong fleet. We are still winning, and considering we are nowhere near as strong as the fleets we're, we're simply destroying, we're doing okay, honestly. We're just losing loads as well. Go and start spamming some cruisers. Getting the enemy into combat a bit earlier would be helpful as well. Likely our missiles would fire a bit earlier. Not 100% sure on that, but yeah, getting them in combat earlier would likely be more beneficial to us than not. Especially with some strike craft to take out some of their strike craft before they have a chance to even fire the first shot. I am noticing some of their strike craft are doing damage before they're being shut down, since we're rushing towards them so quickly. Since we had the influence and loads of alloys, we are now building ourselves a Dyson Sphere. We are still building habitats though in the systems next to the ones currently under attack. This system, for instance, I am actually very concerned we're going to lose. It's one of the only systems which just failed to be strong enough in time. All the others are pretty much secure. That's the one weak spot. They go through this, they can still go this way, but there's not all that much there outside of teleporting over here, and that'll give us plenty of time to sort other things out. 
You know, now I've said all that, what we should really do is just put down a habitat here. Yeah, okay. Gonna move there, then put down habitats in this system instead. Change of plan. There we go. The Scourge have been contained on the world forevermore. A terrarium to keep our pets. With almost all their forces down here, they can do very little to stop our encroachment into their territory. Their worlds will be beautiful baubles in the galaxy, showing the divinity of all things. I'm so tempted to make a secondary force right now and attack these empires, the Union and the Confederacy. And of course, the nation. If I can just have three strong fleets, we could attack each of them safely and start taking this chunk of territory. 175 influence, thank you. So this was a drone event. Essentially what happens is we find drones on the moon. Uh, well, as I think it was on the moon or something similar to that. And then eventually it turns out, oh, it's all an ambush. But they're really weak. It's normally an event you find early in the game, but I found it really light. So, yeah. Loads of influence. Thank you very much. Ten days until profit maximization engines is in full effect. This is probably going to wreck my economy. I don't really know. It's that minus happiness. I'm just really nervous about this. Please work out. Okay. Okay, so by the end of the month, the effects will be felt. Before we do that, let's just have a quick recap then, what this is giving us. It's plus 10% resource from jobs, that'll include tech, which is fantastic. It increases our trade value from plus 20 to plus 25, so essentially a 5% increase in our trade value. Extra happiness for the rulers, minus happiness for everyone else. Our navy capacity will be cut. Oh no, it won't, it's the same. And the economy will update in just a couple of days. Who released the Grey Tempest? <laughs> Not right now. But seriously, who just released the Grey Tempest? One day and the effects are felt. Overall, that was a positive. The most notable thing is our tech went from 37k to 39k, which is a big deal. So, that's in full effect. Our world is still stable. Now, the reason is, although people are now going to be more upset... Whoa, your own population is now down to 10% happiness. They don't make up all that much power on our planet thanks to buildings like this. The processing facility. Reducing the political power by 25%. Here's a question, is there a authoritarian politic anywhere? Since you have the greater good. So the greater good here is what makes workers happy, which will also include our own populations, but bear in mind it also gives them more power on the world, so this is why we're just never going to allow this through. Is there the opposite? Is there the authoritarian version of this? Because that's the libertarian version. I don't think there is. This is what I'm going to put forward next. Silence the Solus. Less power from tech, but it hurts machines more and increases the spiritualist ethics attraction, thus making us more money in the long run. The final version's a bit extreme. But it will reduce how many consumer goods our populations take up, which is more profit for us. And it even increases the happiness of our own populations, which is good as well. In fact, it increases everyone's happiness and even more spiritualist ethics traction. I have to say, I do think this is one of the weakest lines. Even as a spiritualist empire, the Divinity of Life set just isn't all that powerful. That's useless for us as well. I can't quite put that one forward, that's why I went with this one first. That's the one we're going to do next, which will finish off industrial development as well. More minerals, more alloys. And it unlocks the planetary decision to allow us to strip mine worlds. Okay, so it doesn't actually give us any more alloys and minerals at um, the final level, but it does decrease the upkeep of making alloys, so it will give us a load more minerals overall. <laughs> Recall that we are making... Almost now 4.5k alloys a month profit. 
I've just found out something horrific. Okay, I'm sure some of you already know this, but I didn't because, well, if you read this, their orbital bombardment is selective. It says right there, that is the bombardment type. When they are bombarding a planet, that is what they are doing. However, it turns out they can actually kill every single population on a planet. Now, it isn't when it reaches 100% devastation, because that's happened a few times now, but they will actually slowly kill off every single population. It takes a very long time, mind you. But they can actually bombard a planet into non-existence. I wish it stated that somewhere. I mean, right there it says, will not kill the last 21 populations. But it will. Still taking them a very long time. Still takes them tens of years. They have been working on that habitat since pretty much the start of their incursion into our space. But they will eventually destroy our habitat completely. Now, of course, we have an excess of population. Our population is increasing to grow faster and faster as we make more and more of the city planets. We can just absolutely overload our habitat to population. We can work around this, but I wish I knew this before I saw it happen. I mean, it makes sense that the Endgame Crisis doesn't abide by the normal rules. I just wish it had a more clear indication. Because, yeah, they definitely didn't land on this planet. If they did, it would counted, it would have counted as an infested world. Even the normal habitats do when the enemy land on it. It's just a matter of they killed all the populations there. Uh, speaking of which, then we need to send some more over here. Is there any planets we have any unemployment on? Uh, not a habitat, though. Anything but habitat. Sure. Okay, with that, we can start repairing the fortresses. Or at least one of them. So, I am now going to start being a bit more aggressive, moving populations to our habitats. I've been quite lax with it so far, but now it's going to be way more important. Oh, that's annoying as well. So, the peacekeepers are improving our relations, but I can't invite them into our federation because I'm not excellent relations. And they're not going to ask us by the looks of things. Oh, come on. I want the peacekeepers on our side. Do you know how good that will make us look? In the eyes of the galactic community. Oh, where are you going? Okay, Colossus, can you please just teleport there? Do not want you to be caught out. A mighty shroud. Give us something shiny. Finally, the precognition interface. That took so long to get. So, right now they are using this. It upgrades into that. Wow. Yeah, plus 20 to their tracking, plus 10 to their fire rate. If they were using swarm, it would be more evasion and more sublight speed. Right now, though, we are still using picket just because we want the extra fire rate more than anything else. And this tracking certainly isn't bad. So, yep, everything's going to be upgraded to use that instead. With the artillery version, it's an extra 5% fire rate, extra 5% range, and plus 10 to tracking. With the cruisers, that'll be the same. I mean, we could use carriers on some of these. Wouldn't be terrible. You know, on the actual carriers. But no, I think I'll just stick with artillery for now. Longer range on the missiles, and even the plasma cannons come online a little bit earlier. Shame we can't have a large weapon at the back there. Really should start using titans. Research platform lost. Why do you have the normal jump drives? Okay, that's very annoying. Uh, move up then. Just make sure you can go to safety. And we'll make sure the Colossus upgrades to using the side jump drives as soon as possible. Along with Dragon Scale Armor. All of our fleets have moved over here. They're now going to return back to base and upgrade with their new AI. Oh, 
Oh, that's a problem. Here's the super ground force. Now, thankfully, this world has near 8,000 itself, but I think they're gonna land. Ships upscaled. Don't. No, do not. You are doing. Research well, that's gonna be problematic. Uh, good luck, defense forces. I believe in every last one of you. Let's try and upgrade our um, soldiers while the fight's going on, because that's gonna take a very long time. How strong are the enemies? So, 1v1, I think we win? Yeah, we do more damage, but I'm assuming they're not affected by morale. Yeah, that's a problem for us. We have a lot more health, though, so honestly, we could just win that. Which would be amazing, just make them lose 8,000 to their fleet power. Oh, I just thought I am such a dum-dum, because it's something I never have to do. I could have gave this a general. You can give generals to worlds. And I didn't think about it, because I just never put generals on planets. But that would have gave us such a huge advantage there. I am a dumb. I have done the dumb. Dumb, it is I. Now mixing in cruisers with our corvette fleet, so that we can engage the target a little bit further away. We lost almost all of our destroyers. They died really easily. They were fun, but since a lot of the shots aren't actually rendering in, there's so many of them, it's less fun. So, back to trying out the whole concept of cruiser spam. I'm also now building a few titans as well. This battle has been going on for so long now, I've managed to upgrade the damage three times. So, yeah, our forces are now far stronger than they were and are crushing the enemy. And it's because I put almost all of our points into extra health for our defensive forces, so they're more resistant to bombardment and not into extra damage, so the damage tech was really cheap. So it occurs to me, someone opened up the L gate with the Grey Tempest and I've seen no Grey Tempest. I guess the galaxy is a bit too scary for them. Or I'm just nowhere near an L gate anywhere. Oh, that's a problem actually. Are there any L gates here? There's a gateway there. No, the Scourge won't be getting any L gates. That's good. That could have been bad. Where's the closest L gate then? Uh, I need to send a scientist, don't I? Uh, scientist, you, you lucky, lucky person, you get to go here. Uh, there is the Glister Delegate. That's kind of annoying for me, because that's really far away from my territory, thus it'll be really expensive if I try and get any of the territory over here. But the L-Gate is shiny. I do like shiny things, but more realistically, the L-Gate has a lot of resource. Lots and lots of worlds, some nanites which we could use. Should I bother? Yes, I probably should. I don't want to lose such a good scientist. I'll make a new scientist soon. So two things are really holding me back right now. The first is gravity, but secondly, it's the mineral consumption of this empire. I am constantly upgrading things, and things are not cheap, especially on all these habitats. So it is becoming a bit of an issue just to keep everything up and running. So I am starting to turn some of our worlds into proper mineral worlds now, which is weird considering we have a matter decompressor at full strength and still it's not enough. I'm not even able to continue to upgrade our planets into the beautiful city worlds. The second thing which is becoming a problem now is the gas consumption. We are using loads of it and it's getting worse. So we need more refineries, we need more... Honestly, we just need more habitats, but habitats for me to use rather than just using as fortresses. We need to start killing off these fleets. Right now, I'm building habitats to replace the ones we're losing, so essentially we're losing one system being pushed back, but it's not really a big deal. But what I need to do is start pushing them back a little bit around these borders. They are currently spreading down here again, and I'm hoping we can kind of just guide them that way. The people who are losing their lives do so with the knowledge they are making the galaxies safer. Okay, our scientists are here. Send one there, and I'll instantly jump back. And our fleet is ready. There we go. Competitors engaged. Surprise! 
We are cruisers. Ooh. Hopefully not all of them will be removed, because every time I can, I am still paying for the festivals to increase our population growth and our happiness. This habitat has no one controlling it! Well, at least now the cycle can be placed down and we can start reading everyone's minds, you know, just to make sure they're all thinking the correct things. For the good of all. The missiles are so hard to say. They are being fired, it's just... They're very slow moving. Once they reach the target, they just destroy everything. Our victory is assured. Hostile market forces have been halted. Ha! Ah, look how fast they repair. Well, you were the dumb today. Tomorrow, probably me again, but today, Lathrix, smart. Well, it's a bit earlier than I wanted, and I haven't yet fully sorted out the fleet. I need to use fleet manager so much. I know I do. I know I do. It's a problem with me. I don't like the fleet manager all that much. Anyway, I'm uh, going to send these fleets out now because the enemy are terrifying, and they're about to break down the last habitat in the system. So we need to safeguard this system. This one's still got quite a few to go, including the Ultra World over here, which needs more people after that last attack. But yeah, this one's about to break. It has one last habitat left. So, send in the fleet there. Ooh, something else I was noticed. Uh, there's no longer an FDL inhibitor. They can just go past the system now. Yep, that's where our fleets are going. They should win quite handily against those. We're just going to lose quite a few of our people. Which we do really care about. We're not evil. See, if we had mixed fleets as well, our cruisers would stay further back. Scientific asset lost. Ooh, why did we lose a scientist? Oh, because we have scientists here who aren't running away. Uh, could you please save them? Thank you. Excellent. Okay, so the last resolution has passed, which means now Divinity of Life is at Silence the Soulless. Next up will be a defined purpose, which is the final one. The first, Project Cornucopia. After that, is there anything we want? We could go with the research ones. I mean, it's more stuff for us. We do like research. So that's pretty meh. Is there anything which is going to cause issues here? Not that I can see, and that last one is insane. Even less happiness again for our people, but... Plus 10% researcher output is just really nice. And then unlocks a planetary decision that consumes Zro to fund extra dimensional research. I don't know what that is, but it sounds amazing. Yeah, I can't see anything. Oh, no, no, I can see the problem. The artificial intelligence outlawed and passive native studies policies are banned. We have the artificial intelligence outlawed. Can we even swap that back? I don't think we can. Oh, we can, we can. We can put it on servitude. Maybe we should go with that. I mean, gives us more stuff, makes our people less happy. Seems to be what we're good at. Did the Titan just miss? Uh, of course. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Corvettes. That looks so painful. I miss using battleships. I know how to use battleships. Still, we have loads of point defense, so a lot of the damage isn't really getting through. And we are the victor. 
How many cruisers did I lose? Not that many. Lots of Corvettes lost, but that's to be expected. Okay, so we've saved the system. Do we move forward now is the question. Do we start attacking some of this? We could do. We could just try and safeguard this sector a bit. Give them the extra speed and the helping as well, to be fair. <laughs> so I've been watching closer in these fights, and one thing I'm noticing which is a problem is the Corvettes are so quick, they outpace our strike craft, which is kind of to be expected, but it's just something I didn't really consider. And that means the strike craft are not acting as point defense very well to defend the Corvettes. Perfectly fine with the cruisers, not the Corvettes. So the Corvettes are still being hit with a wave of enemy strike craft and missiles. Now the Corvettes themselves do have point defense. But it seems to not be enough because of the limited range. The enemy still gets a few hits before they can be taken out. And with their extra damage, the strike craft of the enemy are pretty much one-shotting the Corvettes. Research actualized. Also, missiles are too slow, and it annoys me. I'm sure some of you noticed that, um, but apparently the Scourge have got to this point now. This is the first wormhole going into our territory, so we need to put down some habitats here. Oh wait, well you do have one habitat. Uh, the habitat needs to be converted. I thought we'd have a bit more time than that. I did notice that earlier, but I just didn't really bring it up, I think, because, yeah, I thought we'd have way longer than we actually did. And shield generator... I'm currently saving up at Influence, though, because I really want to build a star base over here. Anyone here still building habitats? Try and stop? No? Yes, okay, you stop. Really want that before anyone else gra uh, grabs it. At the moment, no one else is building there because the enemy keep on popping up, and that scares away their construction vessels and everything, which is good for us. Then you fellows get over there. Soon you're going to build more habitats. Or at least get close by. Okay. Over here, we're about to bubble another world. This is what I really miss, just the Tachyon Lance. Really long range, hits the enemy instantly, which is the bigger deal, and does loads of damage with loads of bonuses. I still think the battleships are definitely the way to go when it comes to fighting off the Scourge. It has been fun using cruisers, but... I've even been messing around using the carrier settings, you know, I've been mixing them in with the destroyers and the corvettes as well. Yeah, I think battleship spam kind of beats them out though, even when you mix them all up. And probably beats out having battleships mixed in, just loads of these can just devastate the target so quickly that by the time the enemy actually engage and do damage, they're pretty much dead. Just so much bonus damage here and such a good range on everything. But we will persevere. I am continuing with the missiles because that's what I wanted to do this run. So that's what we're doing. Won't do it in a proper scary run though. Enterprise established. I think if I wasn't messing around as much, we probably would have already won by now, honestly. Yes, we have the system. Fantastic. Okay. You can move there already. That's the main system, right? Okay. Oh, apparently you want to go that way. No. This way. Then there. Want to take out the main system as fast as possible. That'll take out all of the um, the nanites. And then we're safe to just explore this and grab all the worlds. Each of these nanite worlds will be able to be terraformed afterwards. So there's one there. There's one there. So there's already two in this system. Might be missing one. Yep, there's three. Not bad. That's just one system. Think of all the minerals we can get. So, a few things then. This is now a new recording session, and apparently my Colossus vanished. I don't know when I lost it. I was going to warp it over here. It was nowhere in danger, and yet I don't apparently have it. And I just lost a fight. Well, technically we won. We managed to kill off one of the enemy large fleets, one of the four million fleets. 
but my fleets are now truly devastated, so they need to return home, heal up, and get some reinforcements. We need to stop messing around with the cruisers now at this point. I will still be using the cruisers, but it does seem like just spamming them is a terrible idea. With battleships, you can get to that critical mass of damage where you don't take damage back because you're killing them, at least thinning them out so much before they come in range of you that all of the problems kind of go away. But with cruisers, you don't really get that because of the slow speed of the shots. The missiles just aren't strong enough and the strike craft take too long as well to get in combat, whereas the battleship's weapons... The main weapon is an instant hit, the next weapons are super long range and quite quick moving, so they get hit multiple times before the enemy getting range. With the missiles, they're so slow the enemies always get in range. Even if the missiles one shot the enemies, we'd always be hit by at least one shot from each of the enemies, which isn't really working out. But still, it's been fun just doing a bit of science because we can, but battleships definitely the better idea. Will I stick with cruiser still? Maybe. Do I have to remake my Colossus? Apparently so. Also, probably shouldn't have the cruisers using the afterburners, increasing our sublight speed. It is just making us get in range too fast. Yes for these, and then no for these. Will I just start to build battleships now? I am so tempted, because these are just so good. The first of the nanite worlds have now been fixed. Now they're all just Alpine, because that was the first option in the menu. Also changing up a few of the worlds next to it, and grabbing the next system already. So loads more worlds here, which is going to be fantastic for us. And I've also begun to spam loads and loads of battleships. They'll be mixed in with the cruisers mostly, but as you can see here... This fleet is nowhere near done, and yet it's already rivaling the fleet power of a completely finished cruiser spam fleet. And before people say in the comments, I'm sure they already have, yes, you are clearly not meant to spam cruisers. I just wanted to see if it would work, honestly. I knew it wouldn't, I really knew it wouldn't, but I wanted to see anyway what would happen. And it was worse than I would have originally thought. Oh, that's a problem, because that wormhole goes to our territory as well. Yeah, this one goes all the way over here, doesn't it? So, now we have two places where we need to put down some more stuff. Uh, we can turn you into a... Wow, we can make you an ultimate fortress world. But I'm not going to do that because, well, you are a really good world already. So, instead, let's just pop down at least one habitat and put loads of populations there. So another reason why I prefer battleships over what we've been building currently is because of how the upgrades work. Right now, if I wanted to continue to upgrade the carriers, what I would be doing is upgrading the missiles and upgrading the energy weapons. The problem is, it's also using armor, of course, so I'm not upgrading all of its components. Whereas the, with the battleships, all you need is the armor and the energy weapon... And that's it. Occasionally strike craft, although we're not using that many of them, we're only bringing a few just as point defense. It just means you can scale up all of their components a lot faster because you're upgrading two sets rather than three sets, and you're still upgrading everything they have, if that makes sense. And it is done. Industrial development is now maxed out. Lovely. So should get loads of minerals back? Yes, in fact we did. Fantastic. Some of our worlds are a bit less habitable, but at least now our alloys are cheaper to produce. And in the end, isn't that all that matters? So finished off that, we finished off that. We don't really want the greater good. Just, well, level 1's okay, but the rest gives too much power to our workers, which is a problem with that. Empire type, to be perfectly honest. I don't really care about any of those. Having one last look. That's not... That's already active. That's not horrendous. Less, um, uh, less amenities being used is good. The rest I don't really care about too much. Extra food from jobs. Once again, don't really care about the negatives there. That's when it becomes a problem. Less minerals and less alloys, so all the way to here, I'm actually fine to support, but then that onwards, no. 
Maybe we should do the tech one next. Even less happiness for our people, but more output for the most powerful. So you know what? I'm actually going to put that forward in the emergency one, because I do want to get this started. This will end with plus 10% researcher output, uh, plus one planet sensor range, extra research station output, which is actually okay for us, considering how much space we have. The downside is star base cost more. That doesn't matter. Our energy is about to be permanently fixed because we're about to get a Dyson Sphere anyway. Less happiness for our workers. Again, we can avoid most of the negatives just because how our empire is currently structured. Overall, yeah, I'm happy with that. Plus, we can use Ro to do the whole decision thing, which I've never used before, so I don't even know what that does. Is there anything here which would stop us? I'm sure I've looked at this before. I can't see anything right now. We can always stop later on. Let's put that forward. Let's support it. And let's get that started. Our battleship fleets are looking terrifying. Now, of course, there is the argument to have mixed fleets. That is, a fleet with battleships, cruisers, corvettes, destroyers, everything. But again, I just find the issue of the smaller craft get in range so quickly, you always end up losing them, and you'll never reach the point where you have the critical mass of range damage to kill the enemy before they do any damage back to the fleet. I was hoping that maybe cruisers could also fulfill this, but it seems like they just can't because of the lack of the X-sized weapons. These ones here. And I don't think there's a way to make a cruiser as well, which uses only large. Yep, yeah, one medium, one large. One large, and then medium's the largest you can put in the back. I do love cruisers, I just don't find them particularly good at the end game. They're fun. They're very fun. And maybe I'm using them wrong. Well, I'm definitely using them wrong. You shouldn't just stack them like this. I think cruisers would make a good part of a mixed fleet, and you can definitely fight off the scourge of a mixed fleet. You can definitely do that. But I still find Battleship Spam just more compelling. Moving our fleets over to here, because sadly, the enemy have got up to this wormhole. Now, there is a habitat here, so I haven't really been too concerned. But it is now time to attack them. Colonial Enterprise upsizing. Competitors engaged. Competitors engaged. Colonial Enterprise outsizing. It's still weird to see Titan shots and not seeing the enemy die. There we go, look at that. Absolutely melted them. We lost cruisers and corvettes, no battleships, yeah, that's to be expected, and that was a decent sized fleet, and we just obliterated them from existence. Now, we could clear up here, but I'm still tempted just to save our own skin over here instead. Yeah, I think that would be for the best. So, what I'm going to do is probably use this gateway, take up this area here. Yeah, let's try and safeguard this section here, if we can do that. That will hold off the enemy for absolutely ages. So, let's go back. Or shall we start at the top? No, this area down here is the most at risk at the moment. So, can you all please get to here? And I'll send the Colossus after you. Finally, the Federation is max level. That took so long. But there we go. The President gets plus 10% trade value. We get plus 25% damage versus the end game crisis, which is amazing. And we get plus 5% trade value. That's something else to bear in mind. This run is one of the first runs on max difficulty where I haven't gone with Defender of the Galaxy. I am purposefully not giving myself a plus 50% damage bonus. This is the first time we've got a bonus from this. I think the best federation against the Endgame Crisis is the Galactic Union, since it gives you the 25% bonus twice. I don't think any of the others give that. I'm also now realising I still haven't had the Martial Alliance Federation. That's the only federation type I am yet to try out. Either way, though, this is lovely. Plus 25% damage and plus 15% total trade value. Obviously, is fantastic. Well, it's happened due to my inactivity and just messing around, trying to hit 60k research and sorting everything else out. They have completely broken the system. Right now, there is no FTL inhibitor, and there's not enough population to even repair one. 
Of course, we could send some over, which is exactly what I'm going to do. But it's going to take some time. No point in uh, sending any more, since most likely it's going to break. Oh, they are ignoring it. Never mind. Everything's all well and good. Over here, though, our main fleets are now sorting out the enemies. And since I'm now sending them the correct formation, most of them are attacking before the enemy gets a chance to attack back, which is exactly what I want to see. Though it does seem like we're not quite following the slowest of us, which is my bad. Oh, that's why you just leveled up and got a new stat. Okay, I'll follow that one instead. If they all follow the slowest, they will all enter combat at basically the same time. Otherwise, if you stack them up, but the speed is broken, as in the speed is different for each of them, even if you stack them all up perfectly on the border and then go over, they tend to attack in different orders. Let's deal with the station so we can send over the Colossus. Now, there's a good chance that I didn't actually lose the Colossus to some kind of save problem. But maybe the station came back. But I'm sure I dealt with the station before sending the Colossus there before. But I don't know. Do they get the station back automatically if they have a world there? Complete. I could have just messed up. To be perfectly honest, I could have just messed up. That's what I want to see. Like that. Accidentally attacked two fleets at once here. We're still going to be okay. But we are going to lose more than I'd like. As long as I don't lose too many battleships, I don't really care too much. We lost a couple of battleships, no titans. Okay, so not terrible, just a lot of these smaller ships were lost. Oh wow, there's a world there as well. So all three of these systems have worlds on. That's going to be a bit annoying, but still. So I think then we should go back on ourselves now and start going this way. Can't see any fleets, so just take out all the star bases. The Colossus will be just behind, turning everything into marbles. Well, we got this event light. We've found the Feral World. So this world will be our gas world, and considering that's our main problem rare resource, I think I'm just going to throw hundreds of population here instantly. Convert it into the Arcology Project as soon as we can. In which case, we're going to want loads of these, since we need all of these city districts finished. The problem is that we are now finally getting to the end of this game. We are now beating the, uh, the Scourge back quite handily with our fleets. We have a second fleet, which is almost ready to deal with the Scourge as well, so we're going to have two fully operational Scourge groups. We're going to be fine. As the Colossus just chills above worlds. Stop bombarding it. I'm going to make it pretty full. Dum-dums. So now that these are no longer on the front lines, we can start converting our habitats into... anything, actually. Lots of them will just become refineries, though some of them will just focus on trade. And maybe some research as well. So there we go, we have our first research station over one of the new pretty planets. Still infested underneath and cut off from the hive mind. Perhaps the Scourge will learn to adapt to their world and live in harmony with it. Or perhaps we'll just use this like a zoo and have tours for people willing to pay enough. Maybe that's their true purpose, to bring tourism into our space. Divinity of life is now finished. A defined purpose is now active. That's a lot of modifiers. Which are all good for us. Overall, a fantastic thing for us to see. So next then, what I'd like to do is just continue down the technology route. Now we do have the problem of... Where are you? There we are, the Artificial Intelligence Outlawed. We can, of course, still change that. We just can't give them full rights. But we can stop them from being outlawed. That's not really going to be a big problem for our Empire. A little bit less influence, because it, it will annoy our main faction. But that's fine. I'll put this forward as soon as it's off cooldown, and I have enough influence. Actualized. 
Our science is doing pretty darn well now at 72,000 research per month. Okay, get over there. That's about to attack that fleet. Our new fleet over here is even stronger than last. And I think I'm going to send those through the wormhole so that we can start protecting this area as well. So once again, kind of pincering the Scourge over here. Because they are getting way too close to way too many wormholes. In fact, yeah, we're already there, so let's go here. I went to war with the Regulators before reclaiming their territory so that we may contain it instead. They have Gaia Worlds, they have unique buildings, they have all the stuff we could possibly want. Though by the looks of things, they may have already lost their main worlds. So we're going to be getting them back from the Scourge anyway, hopefully before they completely devour them. Where's their main world then? There's the archive. So where's the... Ah, there it is, the Font of Knowledge. Yeah, we'll be taking that. Thank you very much. Our ground forces are already moving over here. All 19,000 of them. They have a mega shipyard. Well, we're about to have two mega shipyards then. Well, we're going to be able to build ships incredibly quickly. The Font of Knowledge is ours, and we're going to be turning it into some serious tech. We do not need the additional minerals, that'll increase stability, that'll increase the overall output. Yeah, I'll keep those for the rare resources, keep the energy, we don't even need the food right now, so all that's being swapped over. And this will be able to host a lot of people with lots of jobs. So now we have the two mega shipyard, <laughs> plus 245, it's building a Colossus. Am I going to have two... I think I'm going to have two Colossus because, yeah, two Colossus. Yeah, because I can only normally support one, but it was already building a Colossus, so I'm about to get a second Colossus. Take that, Galaxy. If you didn't think you were ours before, well, oh dear for you. The gateway is now being completed, and as you can see, the Scourge are... Pretty much done for at this point. We are crushing them in this territory over here. We've reclaimed the worlds they were currently trying to get from... I forgot what the Fallen Empire was actually called. But the Fallen Empire, the materialists have been pretty much now taken over by us instead. Is that called Ant's Nest? No, it's not. But yeah, things go incredibly well. And now, do you hear the voices too? Please work? Oh... Wouldn't have minded some extra research just to finish off. Over here, though, our gas production has gone through the roof. This, pl this single planet is already producing 53 gas. And I'm just waiting until we have some more city districts up and running so we have some more basic jobs and some more housing. Then I'm going to send over a whole new wave of colonists. It's not even that far off being able to undergo the Arcology project. So, just a refresher as I send some more people over why this world is so great. It's because of the event we had, which means we have the unique spore vents. For every 20 populations, we get one extra gas plant engineer. Now, the gas plant is different from the normal buildings we have, which make gas refiners, because the gas plant engineers not only produce gas, I think the same amount as the regulars? No, perhaps a little bit more. But they also increase all gas from any job by 5% each. So right now we have four of them, which means we're getting plus 20% gas from all of the jobs, including the, the refineries. So if we had a couple of hundred people on this planet, you can imagine that can get really out of hand really quickly. Since each of these are producing gas and they're increasing the gas produced by all jobs, and it kind of feeds itself. In this time of galactic crisis, we must remember the important things to us like collecting more resources. And so we are going to war with one of the other full empires. Because we have the resources to do so. We have a spare fleet, we have another fleet now ready to join the fight over there. We can pretty much do whatever we want. Our single fleets are now almost hitting 600,000 fleet power each. Honestly, I've seen them much higher than that, but considering how fast we can now produce them as well, since we have two 
mega shipyards. It really doesn't matter if we lose a few. And I'm just producing so many alloys, I can't even keep up anyway. Also, we have the uh, mega art installation here, increasing our amenities by 15%. And I'm going to try my best to try and grab this one as well, thus increasing it by an additional 15%. All of my worlds have all they can possibly want. Annoyingly, it's the regime which may grab it before us. The problem with that is, we like the regime. It's like the one group I'm not going to go all out war with. We need to try it with someone, after all. Research actualized. It's getting more expensive, but I think I'm just going to jump and just grab the system straight away. It's less efficient, but yeah, I really do want an extra mega structure. Just because it's so interesting having multiple of the same one, since you aren't allowed to do that yourself. Speaking of which, is that Colossus done yet? Almost. Apparently there's an L gate here the whole time. I don't know why they haven't used that. Do the Scourge not use L gates? I'm sure they do. I missed so many things. I missed one of the wormholes and I missed one of the L gates. Now I didn't talk about some of the wormholes because I was perfectly safe with them, but... Yeah, I definitely missed at least one of them. Yeah, that one there. No, not that one. Uh, which one was it? Which, which one of the wormholes did I just completely miss? It wasn't this one. I think it might have just been this one. Yeah, that one. Thankfully, I was protected here anyway, but... Yeah. This group over here have been fighting for so long, and they're so weathered down. But the continuous upgrades in their armor and their weapons have just kept them going just about. This is truly the veteran group. They are almost... Oh, we are further on than I thought we were. We are almost done with them. Okay, grab the stragglers over there, then grab that. The titan is already... Sorry, the colossus is already moving. That's great. Now let's see if we do in fact get the second colossus. And, is it going to be my style of ship, or their style of ship? Saying that, I don't know what style of ship the Awakened Empire had. It could have been the same as ours. I honestly can't remember. I'm hoping it's not, because that would be really cool, having two different styles of ship as well. Come on, and... Same as mine. Were they reptile? Oh, it's a global pacifier as well, so we have two global pacifiers now. That is interesting. Okay, you can go there. That fleet's quite weak. So even the veteran group could take it out. Probably. You move there. Oh, actually, no need to, is there? You can just jump. Though you are currently using the weaker jump drive since you were designed by the Awakened Empire and not us. Meanwhile, back at the Fallen Empire, the Awakened Empire, I should say. We are splitting up our ground forces because they are plenty strong enough each to deal with most of these small worlds. Our fleets have already devastated everything. Ooh, that's one of their main ones, right? The Preserve? Or at least one of their unique ones, not really particularly powerful. Primitives. They're called Primitives, but bear in mind these are the ones they collect from the regular empires. Definitely one of the nicer of the Fallen slash Awaken Empires, but still remarkably condescending. Ooh, a coordination center. Not bad. Where are your main worlds? Am I just blind? We have the preserve over there. I don't know which one of your worlds is your main world. So far they all look pretty poor, honestly. Oh. Maybe these three here. Of course for last place I bloody well look. Okay, gather every other world first, then we'll re-merge all of our forces to attack the last three. The main ones. Oh dear, the veterans managed to run into a fleet. I was not paying attention at all. I was just saying as well that my micromanagement had got bad. They had just took out the station and were ambushed.
Research actualized. Okay, can you guys get closer so you can jump to help out, please? That would be wonderful. Just move one up, you can jump, and you're definitely strong enough to deal with that even after you've jumped. Hopefully we don't have to stop the Colossus from firing. That would be great. Come on, get a move on already. Research actualized. Okay, seems like they're just staying put anyway. Don't know why they do that, but I'm not going to complain. Oh, it looks like we're finishing off the last of these. Uh, which one needs the most help? Neither, really. Yeah, our ground forces just became so powerful. Uh, the psychic armies are already a very powerful ground force. Of all those bonuses, yeah. Actually, what well, what you can do in this jump here and take that. Yeah. The last of the Awakened Empire's worlds is now being taken over. Cradle, brother, and mother are now all ours. That will take a long time until the population are of any use to us. Still want to know what happened to sister. We have father, brother, sister, oh dear, cradle, and mother. Attempting to it is the end of the regulators. Planetary market secured. And the end of the peacekeepers. Oh, the regulators were these fellows. Yeah, I just saved their last world, which means I got control over it. Okay. Are they really upset they were recently conquered? The Scourge were just eating your faces! Oh, the end of the Scourge! So apparently, no, you don't need to, to save every planet that's currently being eaten by the Scourge. So, we are done then. The Scourge is over, we are clearly the dominant force in the galaxy, we can wipe away entire awakened empires with a single fleet. We have won. And I would take over everything else, but that's going to take a ridiculous amount of time. This video is already going to be super late because of how long I was just messing around with things. It has been an insane amount of recording for this one. A lot of fun though, again. I think this may be my favourite Empire full stop, which is weird to say after liking so many of the other Empires, but this one might be my just utter favourite. And it's a spiritualist Empire. Just for reference, I don't really like spiritualist Empires normally. But the Mega Church is just so much fun to play as, especially if you go down the more dark route with indentured assets and everything else. It's just such a self-serving, vile empire with this nice polish to it, and that's so fun to play as. The galaxy is ours. We have trading allies. We have people who like us at the moment. And if they ever stop liking us, we can simply destroy them with that. I am all out of time for today's video, so if you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff, helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. The next full playthrough will likely be the minimum... Normally I would edit that out because my brain just stopped working, but it shows how tired I am. <laughs> what I was going to say was, it will be the earliest we can spawn in the Endgame Crisis, and that's going to be the run. I'm either going to play a fanatic materialist using technocracy, or I'm going to be playing as the Terravors, which are the Lithoid Devouring Swarm, because I haven't played that in ages, and devouring worlds for a powerful early start at the cost of, you know, the worlds, is also a really fun idea. And honestly... I've kind of had enough of playing with federations. It would be nice just to be a purifier species again, or an isolationist or something. But for now, I am really all out of time. This took way longer than I expected. Mostly because I was messing around with missiles. Never doing that again. Gonna look up how to use them properly a little bit more, but it does seem like battleship spam just outdoes almost everything else. Thank you for watching, have a lovely day, do take care, and until next time, goodbye. I'm gonna have some rum.